Drive today we bring you Hero's most premium offering yet, the Maverick 440. We tell you how the AMT in the Tata Tigor ICNG feels to drive, and we ride Husqvarna Swat Pillion motorcycle now with a 400cc engine. Hello and welcome to Overdrive. I am Soini Dad. The Maverick 440 is a promising product. In fact, it is Hero's first premium product and also one that commands a higher price tag. Will it be able to help Hero break the 200cc mold and into the 400cc premium space? Let's find out. We are at the white run and you know what? We might just enter an argument if I tell you what almost sounds like a white truth that Hero can't really do the premium segment all that well. Because you see, apart from the Charisma, the 223, that one that was launched in 2003, they haven't really delivered on a convincing enough premium product. But then, this happened. This is the Maverick 440. And if you are a hero nerd, you would recognize it as their spin on the Harley Davidson X440. But here's the kicker. This motorcycle and the 440 platform have been cooking for over three years now, long before the Hero Harley partnership even brewed. The X440, however, hit the market first to dip its toes in the testing waters. But don't think of this to be what the Slavia is to the Virtus, think of it to be what the Kodiak is to the Passat. It belongs to a more relevant segment, a street naked instead of a cruiser. It is also significantly cheaper. The Maverick will up the brand value, the premium quotient for Hero. Hence, you will notice the premium touches as well. LED lighting all around, a striking headlamp housing, sleek tank shrouds and a premium machine finish for the wheels, mirrors and engine cases. Even under the seat, the components are neatly tucked away, but requiring an Allen key for accessing the battery or the electrical connections for those add-ons. Some of the materials here, maybe the plastic parts, the switch gear, etc. The quality doesn't feel as good as what we've seen on the newer Royal Enfield 350s. However, that said, it's definitely the most premium quality that we've seen from Hero so far. Between the legs, the tank is not going to feel too big. Uh, it doesn't really have that big bike feel, honestly speaking. But it's not too small either. It doesn't feel too compact like a commuter. What I also like is the design of the tank. You can very nicely lock your knees into these recesses. So whether you are braking or while cornering, you get a nice grip on the tank. It adds the sense of security. Although the pegs sit slightly rearward compared to the Harley Davidson, they are mid-mounted enough for standing while navigating rough terrain. However, standing off-road could feel cumbersome. So the beauty of this engine is that it doesn't feel as peaky as uh, something like the Speed 400 or even the KTM 390 Adventure. What you get is an engine that has a very unique character. Pulling overtakes feels very easy. It is quite brisk. Even at highway speeds, you can pull overtakes quite nicely. And speaking of highway speeds, Triple digit speeds, you know, 110, 120 kilometers an hour, feels effortless. So even in terms of the cruising ability of the motorcycle, it's actually quite nice. The single cylinder engine is remarkably smooth, with only minimal vibrations at higher speeds. Comfortably cruising at 120 kilometers an hour or trotting along at 40 kilometers an hour in fourth gear is a breeze. And that makes it an ideal tourer or commuter. Hero's version of the long stroke configuration shines here, also offering a characterful thump in the low end, a feature which is now missing in most new end fields. While it may not sprint off the line like a Triumph Speed 400 or the less powerful Honda CB300R, its mid-range power and comfortable riding posture make it a formidable touring machine compared to the motorcycle it so closely resembles. The Harley-Davidson X440 gets upside down, folks. This one doesn't. But honestly, if it's going to save me 40,000 rupees, I wouldn't really complain because you see the suspension actually doesn't leave too much room to complain about. Be it city speeds, be it highway speeds, all of that was really good. So the suspension compliance is actually quite good. 
The Maverick doesn't dart into corners like its prime for KTM counterparts. However, its linear handling traits are sure to impress touring enthusiasts. The brakes have a progressive feel, but I would have liked even better bike from them, especially when carrying a pillion and luggage. From top to bottom, front to rear, the Maverick feels meticulously crafted, leaving little room for complaints. The way Hero has delivered this particular product, I think that pricing is really, really good because mechanically, this motorcycle is very sound. But at the same time, that 1.99 lakh rupee ex showroom pricing, at least at the time of recording this video, is for the base variant. And as you start climbing up the ladder, if you were to reach somewhere here, this kind of motorcycle where you get the alloy wheels, the eSIM connected features, the 3D tank emblem, and the tubeless tyres, of course. For these few bits, you are going to be spending a lot of money because the top-end variant is now entering the Triumph Speed 400 category. And honestly, that engine, that motorcycle is a lot, lot sprightlier than what this machine has to offer. And I think that is going to be the biggest challenge for Maverick. So if you don't like the Triumph for whatever reason, the Maverick could actually be one that you need to consider over anything else in the market at the moment. But like Rohit mentioned, the Maverick 440 is a lot more affordable than the Hero X 440. But would you want to put your money on that motorcycle? Let us know in our comment section on our YouTube channel. We'll take a very quick break here on the show. But coming up on the other side, we'll tell you all about the Tata Tigor ICNG with an automatic transmission. Welcome back here with us on Overdrive. Now, the Tata Tigor ICNG AMT combines the ease of driving an automatic vehicle along with the affordability of a CNG. It also gives us an insight into the changing mindset of Indian customers. So does it deliver? Kranti Sambhav has the answers. This is the latest Tata Tigor iCNG with automatic manual transmission. Tata Motors recently launched their Tiago iCNG and Tigor iCNG with AMT. The AMT version of the latest Tata Tigor ICNG starts at Rs 8.85 lakh and the top-end is for 9.55 lakh. The manual transmission version is priced between 7.75 and 8.95 lakh rupees. And uh, just for the context, the petrol version starts at Rs 6.3 lakh and the top-end is for 8.6 lakh. These are all ex-showroom prices in Delhi. Tata Motors started selling the CNG versions with twin cylinder mechanism just a year back and now the company has taken their CNG game to the next level with the introduction of the AMT, part of the first lot of CNG cars with auto transmission. With claims like best restart, gratability, creep tuning for heavy traffic maneuvering and a smoother gear shifting in line with the petrol AMT. You know what that means, right? Yep, we start with the drive. The Tigor ICNG with uh, AMT has uh, 1.2 litre petrol engine and uh, petrol mode only. This uh, produces around uh, 86 PS and uh, in the CNG mode, this produces around 73, 74 PS of uh, power and uh, 95 Nm of torque. And the tested uh, fuel efficiency figure from ARA is around 28 kilometers per kilogram for the CNG version. So, while driving in the urban condition, in typical city drive, if you're uh, you know, accelerating gently, I think this gives a pretty smooth kind of drive. If I'm not pushing it too hard, uh, the shift is uh, pretty smooth, I would say. So there is uh, some lag, definitely, but uh, that is not going to bother you. The mood of this car or the personality changes uh, when you want to overtake uh, a vehicle. So I'll try and accelerate it harder and then we'll see how does this behave. The moment I push it harder, the decibel level goes up. So you can see engine is working over time to uh, help you overtake uh, whatever vehicle you want to, or if you want to go a bit faster. In that scenario, the gear shift or the lag is amplified. Then you can feel it properly uh, when you're pushing the accelerator hard. It takes time to shift. And when you accelerate it harder, then you feel uh, that lag is uh, amplified in those scenarios, also with this uh, background score. But is it a deal breaker? I don't think so. 
in this segment you approach the cast with different uh, type of expectations and uh, this kind of fulfills it the ride quality of this car uh, really impressed me i really like the way this uh, drives it gives you confidence uh, over broken roads the suspension setup is uh, very balanced and even if you're driving alone uh, this uh, goes through broken roads uh, potholes or speed bumps in a very consistent and uh, comfortable manner so overall this feels like a good urban commuter with uh, extra added comfort one good thing about the uh, icng versions of uh, tata motors is that ease with which you can uh, shift between petrol and cng you have a button over here just uh, push it and uh, you can uh, go in the petrol uh, mode without uh, going through some toggle switch some shuffles or any complicated uh, mechanism other than this convenient feature the car also gets a couple of cng centric safety features like fire extinguisher obviously then a micro switch which turns off the engine the moment the fuel lid opens the thermal incident protection immediately cuts off cng supply to the engine in case of a thermal incident and a special nozzle releases the gas there's a leak detection feature as well which switches from the cng to petrol mode the moment a gas leak is detected tigor comes with four star g in cap rating front dual airbags abs with ebd corner stability control isofix seat belt reminders etc now let's take a look at the rear of this uh, tata tigor i cng with amt uh, the aspect which is the usp of any uh, tata i cng uh, lineup and that is the twin cylinder mechanism for cng storage i'll just remove this floorboard so that we can access it and in case you haven't seen it already you can understand what twin cylinder mechanism is which has uh, help tata motors engineers to achieve uh, better storage for cng which is around 70 liters and also usable luggage space uh, for the passengers or the owners uh, which is almost 181 liters and this is something which uh, separates tata cng cars from any other manufacturer or product and the second practical part of this uh, twin cylinder setup is the availability of spare tires well so you don't have space over here so they have uh, placed it under this uh, boot and uh, you can access it from here is uh, this is the icng with amt version and uh, you can see this uh, stick the gear shift the knob looks smart okay not very appealing i mean i i'm not a big fan of this design or shape this is the first time any indian manufacturer has tried this combo of uh, cng and amt and uh, this combination of icng and uh, automatic manual transmission tells you a very interesting story about indian car market and changing behavior or uh, priorities of indian car customers CNG used to be all about affordability, low running costs, value for money, but uh, customers have uh, changed and the market has also changed. If you look at uh, the prices uh, of uh, petrol and CNG, the price gap has uh, come down. The sales have kind of gone up and Indian customers have also uh, changed. Uh, affordability is not the only criteria they look at when they are uh, going for a CNG version. They want more features, they want the more tech and they want more uh, premium feel to uh, the package and I guess this combination makes sense that way. Tata Motors has also given the Tiago i CNG an automated manual transmission. It has launched in the country at 8.84 lakh rupees. We'll be back very shortly after this break to tell you though about the latest Husk Verna motorcycles. Stay with us, you're watching Overdrive. Welcome back, you're watching Overdrive. The Husk Verna, Swat Pillin and Wit Pillin motorcycles are now not only divided by their body styles but also by the engine capacity. And while Bajaj sees business sense in doing that, will the Indian market be receptive to the Husk Verna motorcycles this time around? Let's find out. Remember this motorcycle? I won't blame you if you don't. This is the Husqvarna. I won't blame you if you don't know how to pronounce it. I won't also blame you if you don't know where these were being sold. Because you see, they just came at a very wrong time. But let's fix all of that. This is a Swedish brand. It's called Husqvarna. It's sold at KTM dealerships because it shares all its underpinnings with KTM. In fact, it's a part of the whole KTM group. But what we are here for is to take a look at the new Husqvarna's, the 2024 edition, because Husqvarna is now back and they've brought along bigger siblings. 
meet the new SWAT Pillin, which also is bigger on size but also has a bigger engine. The same engine from the new KTM 390 Duke. That's why the 401 badging. They have made the bike significantly larger now and you don't need a second glance to know that. Every glance though will go straight to the protrusion on the tank which either bears the Whitpillin or the 401 lettering to tell you what variant you are looking at. And from there on, you realize that it is an arrow straight belt line for this motorcycle highlighting its neo retro form compared to the attacking forward bias stance of its KTM siblings. This design is an evolution of what we saw in 2018. So from that sense, it's more matured, more refined. A few modern touches for the onlooker wouldn't have hurt. Some pinstriping on the wheels or dual tone seats or maybe a contrasting high-vis yellow grab rail at least. What is modern once you get astride is the new instrumentation, LCD for the 250 or TFT for the 401. But we will come to that in a bit. The 401 model has gained about 3 kgs compared to the KTM. And it's not just that, they've also been able to give you better ground clearance now. 177 millimeters instead of the previous 149. So for our lovely roads, that's definitely going to be better. The new Huskies use the redesigned trellis frame and the swing arm from the new KTM Dukes, but trade in the aluminium monocoque subframe for a cheaper steel tubular frame that also provides the straightish seating profile. The off-center linkageless rear shock geometry remains unchanged over the KTM, giving space for a lighter, low-slung muffler and an underseat airbox compared to the outgoing bikes. The Swart Pelin also gets a small bash plate. The seat height is lower too. The updated suspension includes a set of WP Apex 43mm open cartridge forks, adjustable for compression and rebound, and a WP Apex separate piston rear shock, adjustable for preload and rebound. So you can set it up for your riding style. The previous SWAT pillin has often felt like a little BMX bike on, you know, a gravelly road. A lot of fun. The new one continues to be that, but it's also gone through a big growth spurt. It's got a larger frame, larger engine, thanks to all the equipment it gets from the 390 Duke. However, that suspension and the wheel size also comes from the 390 Duke. Now, that is a bit of a missed opportunity is what I feel because while they claim this to be the more off-roady motorcycle out of the twins, it's still got a lot of that Whitpillin DNA in it. Despite those off-road tyres, despite that nice ground clearance, it still feels more road focused and that's because of that suspension. The suspension travel is very much like the Duke 390 which is essentially a street bike. The budget vibrate system provides braking confidence and remarkably, it doesn't seem to mind the off-road tyres. It delivers excellent bite regardless. You can even turn off the rear ABS using the Supermoto mode. Just toggle it on the new instrumentation screen. You might scratch your heads when I tell you that the SWAT pillin does away with the inertial measurement unit or the IMU. And even the Bluetooth module is an optional extra. A bit strange considering the growing appetite of the Indian consumers for rider aids and connected the options since the Huskies first made their debut in India. So you see they've saved cost with the subframe, they've saved cost with the electronics and then you start wondering, they've given you Pirelli Rally STR tyres, that's some top drawer equipment, even the KTM 390 Adventure gets MRFs and doesn't get such quality rubber. So I don't know what the thought process is. But they are tubeless tyres, the wheels however aren't. These wire spoke wheels are going to be the tube type. Uh, so yes, they could catch a puncture on our roads. But at the same time, repairing these wheels, should you smash a spoke or maybe bend the rim, it's going to be much, much easier compared to the alloy wheels. Now, don't let those wire spoke wheels and the off-road tyres fool you. When it comes to navigating bends, trails or even gravel strewn roads, the 399cc engine unleashes a level of polygonism that's nothing short of exhilarating. If you're open to seeing this as a KTM 390 Duke on a budget, dressed up in some neo-retro styling, a little bit better off-road or bad road capability, well, then it all starts to make perfect sense. The SWAT feeling may not be the all-rounder that we wished for, 
but as a budget-friendly, stylistically unique alternative, it does hold its own. And I'm sure there will be quite a few takers for it. Of course, with this whole Bajaj strategy of the 250 being with pillin exclusive and the 401 being swat pillin exclusive, uh, you know, the pricing may not really match what your expectations were. It's certainly cheaper than the 390 Duke or the 250 Duke, which your bike you're looking at. But the lack of certain equipment like the electronics, etc., might free, make you feel like, like this price is a bit of a nudge over your expectations. But think of it like the premium that you pay for an XL seat in an economy flight. It's totally worth it, isn't it? With that, it's a wrap on this week's edition of Overdrive. But remember, you can stay in touch with the team through our various social media platforms and you can write to us on YouTube as well. We'll see you next week. Until then, goodbye. Many thanks for watching.